Recently, I watched a few Dolby Atmos mixing videos over on mixwiththemasters.com, and I noticed the A-list engineers are creating an object bed mix bus in their mix template, but there's not really a lot of discussion on how to do that. Today, I'm gonna to show you why the pros are using an object bed mix bus, and how you can create one for yourself to achieve better Dolby Atmos mixes. So why use an obed? Traditional surround music is created by bussing or panning sounds between channels that correspond to speaker locations. This is what we know as traditional 5.1, left, center, right, left surround, right surround, and then the LFE or low frequency effects. For 7.1, the left rear surround and right rear surround speakers are added. Now for 9.1, left and front wide speakers are added. Mixing Adobe Atmos still allows for this time-tested approach, adding left and right overhead channels. In Dolby Atmos, these channels are referred to as bed audio. Bed audio can be from stereo up to 7.1.2 in terms of track width, that point two being the left and right overhead channels. There are a variety of use cases for bed audio depending on the creative process of the mixer, the capabilities of your DAW, and the delivery requirements for mastering. Dolby Atmos introduces the concept of audio objects. Objects aren't panned to specific outputs. Instead, they are panned in 3D space. So object audio is captured along with the 3D positional X and Y coordinate, as well as the size, which expands the sound field of an object. The size and positional information is captured as any changes are made in real time and is referred to as object audio metadata. A mixer can choose to create Dolby Atmos music with beds, objects, or both but it's audio objects that allows for the most creative expression when creating immersive music. Currently, I'm using objects only when I mix for Dolby Atmos. Now, let's discuss some benefits of doing that and how we can get an Obed created to expand our creative possibilities. Using objects can bring a more consistent result because these objects will hold their position in 3D space much better than using the bed alone. For example, if you have an element and you wanna pan it back and up, when you raise that height when using the bed, your sound source will begin to appear in the height speakers. You may not want that. Well, by using objects, this won't happen. A rear panned object with height added to it, like say you just want it a little bit off the ground, that will not spill into the height speakers. Now, by creating an obed, this will allow a mixer to place objects in multiple places in 3D space at the same time. And those locations can be your preference. You could place something front and rear, top and rear, rear low and rear high. The options really are only limited by your creativity, but creating an obed makes this possible. Now you can use the stock panner and use settings like size and divergence for these kind of ideas, but using the obed technique allows for greater control and I find it translates much better. All right, let's dive in. We'll create an obed together, and I'll also show you how you can EQ and compress your overall Dolby Atmos mix with this technique. So moving over to the DAW here, here is my current Dolby Atmos template. I'm gonna quickly walk through this, and then we'll pull the curtain um, back on this obed. So from left to right, we have a stereo master. Um, I'll often bring in uh, the stereo mastered mix and then AB my Dolby Atmos work in progress mix along with that finished stereo mix. And to do that, I have a VCA set up uh, with a group of tracks um, called Atmos Mix. And then in my solo mode, uh, which has changed because I was in a different session, that's what I get for going back and forth uh, between stereo and Atmos mixing. So I've changed my solo mode. If you didn't see that, I'll go back to it real quick. So solo mode to XOR, which basically cancels the previous solo. So in this Atmos template, I can solo the stereo mix or solo the Atmos mix. Now, all my track stems, uh, since this is just a template, it's empty. Um, I did just drop in some examples really quick just to show people that like, oh, this could be your session track, stereo stems, mono, whatever. And I also have a click track here that we're gonna discuss here in a second. So these stems go into the stems folder 
And then just have a little cheat sheet for myself to remind myself of where my binaural settings are. Um, as we move left to right, I'm gonna close this track folder real quick. Uh, I have a little effects um, folder, we'll, we'll get to that. And then I do uh, this just mono aux track with no label, and that houses my binaural settings plugin. And as I mentioned, I have this little cheat sheet here uh, that just reminds myself at a glance that my near objects in that binaural settings plugin are from 40 to 64 and mid and far and so on and so forth. Okay, so now back on topic for the Obed. <clears throat> uh, this is the Obed here. I'm going to open this up. I just house it in a basic uh, track folder. And what you'll see is it's consisted of aux tracks. So we have a mono aux track across the board for all of these. So we have got um, a left channel, a center channel, a right channel, a front wide, uh, left and right. And I have a 714 set up here in this room, so that front wide is something that I can't often hear. So when I'm mixing 714, I don't often use that, but if I go to a studio that has like a 916 setup, uh, I have this in my template that I could quickly send uh, information out like, oh, I want those guitars to be a little wider. I'll drop a send, I'll show you how to do that in a second, and then it sends out to the front wides for me. So. Uh, continuing down the, tr the the line here with these uh, aux tracks that make up the obed, here's the side left surround and the uh, side right surround, and then we have the um, the left. Uh, I always get confused by this stuff. <laughs> All right, left side surround, left surround rear, right surround rear. This is what I get for just abbreviating. So. Here are your rears, and then you've got left top and right top front, and then, and again, same situation that I described. I'm 714 here, so I have left top front, right top front, left top rear, right top rear. In a 916 configuration, that dot six is gonna give you those, those middle uh, speakers. So this Obed I've created for a 916, just in case, again, if I ever go to another studio that has a 916 setup, I don't have to really change my template too much. It's just set up and I can just use those routings. Uh, so, okay, just to finish that. So right top middle is what that extra set of uh, top height speakers is, left top middle and, and down the line there. So. Now, uh, the Obed is finalized with an LFE aux. Uh, so I do this, I, I talked about this in a pre previous video, where this is the only source for me in my Dolby Atmos mixing that I use the bed for, because that's just, that's the only way you can get to the LFE channel. So as you can see, I have a bus set up, um, I just call it LFE, and that output is set to the bed LFE. Uh, I can show you that. So there's the bed, and it's just going to the bed LFE. And then last uh, two things here. I have the Dolby LTC, which is the timecode plugin on this track. That's how we sync to the renderer. Uh, I guess one thing I should have noted on the LFE is I do this filter on this channel. It's set to natural phase, and basically I'm filtering everything out above 100. Um, that way if I want to take a bass guitar or a kick drum or something like that and send it to the LFE, I'm filtering off that top. Um, and that natural phase, uh, I believe if memory serves me correct, is like the most pristine sort of version of FabFilter Pro Q3. So uh, we talked about the LTC. We'll come to this uh, master sidechain, which is just a mono aux, um, and I'm sending out to a bus. This is how we're gonna EQ and compress the mix. Okay, so now we've taken a look at how that Obed is set up. Um, let's discuss a couple more things. So I have this click track here inside the stems folder that I just wanted to hit play on. And what I'll, what I'll show you is, is essentially, so let's assign this an object real quick. So, to do, to do, let's just put it on 
Uh, since it's a mono source, you're gonna just have your mono object, uh, your mono objects options. So let's just assign it to 50 real quick. We'll turn that into an object. So now if we open up this default panner inside of Pro Tools, obviously we can pan this anywhere, correct? So let's do this. Let's just put it up in the front right for now. Say it's a shaker or something like that. And if I hit play, you're gonna see that going and I pull up the renderer. You can see that is going to the right speaker. Um, now, I have some sends here. So in this OBED, and we're gonna get to this, when you set up the routing of the OBED and the sub pass of the track width itself, that allows you to reach, like I said in the setup, certain places in the room. So here I have a send to the rear low. So if I turn this up, you're gonna see signal come down on my rear speakers here on the OBED. Yeah, so there's my left and rear surrounds being activated. And I have another send for rear high. If I turn that up, you're gonna see the height speakers. There you go. Those are the rear high speakers, right? Or the rear height speakers. And then here's one, I often use this a lot. Here's side surround. So if I have a drum set, say you have a stereo drum set or drum room or something like that. Create them as a stereo object, say they're right and left, but I wanna bring them around the listener a little bit. I can then send out to the side speakers. Um, so if I send using this Obed technique, and blend that, obviously we're blending in the room uh, in terms of your balances. Well, there you go. So now all of a sudden the drums will start to wrap around the user uh, or the listener. And this is where I think the magic of that immersive mixing comes into play. But again, the object bed makes that possible. So really cool sort of brief um, glimpse into, we've looked at the Obet and what it's consisted of or like how you make one. We're gonna dive into deeper and make one ourselves so you can do it on your own. But I wanted to show an example and I know that's just a click track and we're just seeing it visually. Uh, I'm sure no one really needs to listen to a click track. I wanted to show that if you have a source, it's an object in your mix and then you begin to pan that. You can pan the object um, the object obviously with the stock panner, but then you can also place it in other places in the room. Like um, I'll do that with bass guitar a lot. So I'll keep um, a, a good portion of the core part of my tracks I keep left and right. And then I'll start to kind of like spread them out. Like if it's a synth, maybe it's more on the sides or maybe the rear, depending on what it is. Um, vocals, I'll keep up front. Vocal harmonies, I'll keep that intact. You know, once you start separating groups of element, it can, elements, it can be a little weird. Um, but bass guitar is a neat is a neat thing because you can send it to the rear a little bit, and since it has that sort of, um, I think what we've become used to in the stereo world is that that mono sort of feel like having it be a little bit bigger right down the, the back. Um, and it's just a little sprinkle, even though it is technically stereo and being spread in the immersive, it just feels like really robust and thick and full. And, and that, and this allows me to do that. Obviously, if you have a mono source, then it just, it's mono. You could have it in uh, the front left and right which would be sort of your phantom center. And then you send out to the rears. It, it, it's just something you have to play with. But um, at the end of the day here, I wanted to unlock the idea of creating this Obud and how, or Obed, excuse me, and how it can help you create a better mix and, and, and be really creative with your pannings and the music that you're working on. Okay, so now that we've set up uh, why this OBA, OBED exists and, and why it could be helpful, let's set one up together. That way you can do it on your end and follow along and, and then work on some mixes and see how it helps. So real quick, just to start fresh, I am going to wipe out all of this information here because Atmos really loves to start fresh. <laughs> So now to create our own Obed, 
again, my principle, um, since I'm in and out of different studios, my configuration here is a 714 configuration, but I do go to studios that are 916, so my template is created to leverage those extra routings that I don't physically have. So we're gonna do that though, and you can do whatever is works for you. If you need to create a 714 template or a 916 template, I can show you the 916 and we could work backwards. So what we wanna do, uh, co shift command N, new track and Pro Tools, I'm sure many of you know that one, but in case you didn't, um, there we go. I wanna try to call out any keyboard shortcut that I use. And if you hold command and the down and up arrows on your keyboard will change the track type and the left and right arrows on your keyboard while holding command on Mac will change the track width. So we want to, um, we want to take 15 mono auxes to create this obed. So there we go. And I'm going to create a name for this, call it obed. Oh gosh, I didn't do 15 today. So let's do 14 aux inputs and, or aux tracks, excuse me. Oh, bet, there we go. All right, so now we're gonna start naming and assigning these accordingly. So let's just go down the line. I'm just gonna do single letter for just abbreviations. So this is gonna be left, and then we're gonna go center, we're gonna go right, and then this is going to be front wide left, front wide right. Again, those are speakers that I don't physically have in this room, but I want to create it for my template. We're going to go left side surround, right side surround, and then we're going to go left top front, right top front. If I could type left top middle, right top middle, and then we're gonna go left top rear. Oh, I missed the rears, didn't I? See, I knew I was gonna do this. Left top rear, we'll just continue on. Right top rear. All right, so I'm gonna move these guys. We're gonna go, your rear surround should come before the top. So this is gonna be left rear and right rear. And just for clarity, I'm gonna name these, all right, just a little note for myself, sides, rear. I wanna try to articulate this as well as I can to those watching. Heights, dink, 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 perfect. Okay, so now we need to also do two other things. We're gonna create two more mono auxes, and one is gonna be for your LFE. And then the second is gonna be your LTC or your Dolby time code. We're not gonna to touch too much on that, but we'll come to the routing there as we go down. <clears throat> so now we've got our aux tracks created, which will make up our obed. I like to put them in a track folder. So again, shift command N on Mac. I'm gonna hit command and up arrow. It's gonna create a basic folder track for me. I don't need any routing on this obed. Yeah, let's just call it Obed. That way we can put our entire Obed once we're done creating it in this folder, collapse it. Once you create it, you don't ever have to think about it again, unless you wanted to open it up and make sure something's routed the right way. <clears throat> All right, so now we need to assign not only the objects, but we need to pan these aux tracks to where we want them to go in the room. So let's assign this to object 11, we're gonna activate that object. A good principle, because Dolby Atmos likes things just to be clean. I would always wipe your IO, start from fresh. We're gonna pan this to the left, and then we're gonna go down the line. So I know I could do the cascading for those that may say, oh, why don't you just assign it, cascade, the whole shortcut. I'm just gonna do this really um, on a granular granular level so everybody following along can, can make sense of it because this is a pretty technical thing. Um, okay, so now I've assigned object 13. That's gonna be my right speaker. 
Um, I didn't say anything about the center channel because that didn't do anything. The default position there is what it is. All right, so now we're gonna go to object 14, and this is gonna be my front wide. Let's activate that object. Now this is gonna go to the left, and that front rear position is going to be the value of 68. That mathematically is where those front wide speakers are on the pan pot. So 15, it's gonna go to the right, and then that's gonna be 68 as well. Now your left side surround, this is going to be object 16. Activate that. He's gonna go to the left and value of zero there. We're gonna put him right on the sides. Um, I point that direction because that's where my side surround speaker is in my room. Object 17, and this is gonna go to the right, uh, right middle for the surround on the right. And then let's go to object 18. This is gonna be my left rear. So we're gonna to go to the left and then all the way to the back. Object 19, activate that. And this is gonna be my right rear. So all the way to the right, all the way to the rear. I'm sure you're understanding the methodology the more we get into this. So activate object 20. This is gonna be my left top front. So this is gonna to go to the left and it's gonna go all the way to the top. Activate object 21. This is gonna be my right top front, all the way to the right and all the way to the top. And then this is gonna be object 21 or 22, excuse me. This is gonna be my left top middle. So we're gonna to go to the top and change three values on this one. This goes to the middle and then to the top. Object 23. And this is going to be my right top middle. So again, three values to the right. This is going to go to zero and then to the top. All right, object 24. Left top rear. Let's do that one. So left. The rear is going to go all the way to the back, so we're minus 100, and then all the way to the top. And one last one, right top rear. So object 25, let's activate him, open the panner, pan this to the right, all the way to the rear, all the way to the top. Okay, so now we're on the LFE. Hopefully those routings make sense, you can see everything's activated. The assignments are good. We've got green lights, so we're good on the panner. For your LFE channel, <clears throat> you want to create a bus, uh, a mono bus or a mono path inside your I.O. to get to that LFE. As you can see, I've done that here. So there's the input assignment, and then the output assignment needs to go to the bed. And we want to, we want to pan this to, um, well, not pan this. We want to assign this output to that discrete output in the bed. That's going to be output number four. So that's assigned to bed LFE. Now anything we send to that bus input, it's gonna go to that channel in the renderer. The LTC, again, we're not gonna talk too much about this, but we just insert that plug in here. That traces time code for us. On the fab filter I had mentioned, we wanna do natural phase and let's do something like that. All right, so there is the OBED. Let's pause there and we'll talk next about creating, um, or not even creating the OBED, obviously we just, we just did that, but how we could EQ this OBED and as well as compress it.